So we are in LTE. We are talking about LTE features, new features, and um, I mean we already talked about two or three of these, but I will go back again. Um, the data rate is 326 megabits down. That's quite a bit up from whatever we had in 3G. However, this is with 4x4 MIMO and 20 megahertz. Um, the modulation goes all the way up to 64 QAM. That's another improvement, and that's how you get all these high rates. OFDMA. Now, OFDMA, they use only in the downlink, not in the uplink. VIMAX, the main difference between this and VIMAX is VIMAX used OFDMA in both. Okay. And so we will see when we come to SCFDMA, I will explain what SCFDMA is and why they chose that. So other than that, it's mostly similar to VIMAX. Hybrid ARQ, so that's the term we didn't define last time. ARQ is automatic repeat request, right? That is means another word for another word for retransmission. Right? Automatic repeat request is the telephony word for timeout and retransmission in the IP world. In the IP world, when you when we have a TCP and then it times out, you retransmit it. That is called ARQ here, but this is hybrid ARQ because generally the re retransmission is done at the MAC layer. Here it is hybrid, MAC and PHY combined. So I have a slide on that as well. How do you do retransmission at the MAC and PHY combined? Then frame sizes. This is another big difference from VIMAX. I am not teaching about VIMAX, but if you know about LTE, you know everything about VIMAX as well. So one difference is the frame sizes in VIMAX were bigger a little bit, and the telephone companies complained that this may not be good enough for whatever they were doing. So they selected a small frame sizes, and it will become clear as to what the frame size is actually, 10 millisecond and 1 millisecond. So that means there is a fast turnaround. If you need something, you can get it within 10 millisecond and 1 millisecond of when you wanting it. In VIMAX, it was few more milliseconds. Persistent scheduling. And um, so in VIMAX as well as in LTE, every time in every frame, every station is told when they can transmit. Okay. So when I send a beacon, I mean, when the base station sends a beacon, it says that station number three, you can transmit at this time, station number two, you can transmit at this time, and that's it. Basically, nobody else can transmit. And station 4 you can receive at this time, station 5 you can receive at this time. So there is a whole scheduling done, every frame. So persistent scheduling is that you can be scheduled forever. I mean, forever is actually not true, but basically it's going to schedule for longer time than just one frame. I can say, okay, like every third frame you can transmit in the fourth slot. Okay, that is persistent. So why it is good? Because then I don't have to tell you every time I save some bits in transmission and you are always ready, you know, when your turn is. So that is good for um, repeating, repeating things like voice and video. Where once you start watching the video, you're going to transmit or receive every 30 millisecond or 33 millisecond a frame, right? IP based flat network architecture. And the phone company knows that its architecture is too complex with all these boxes. We saw, you know, like we saw BTS, BTC, SSG, SGSN, GGSN, and so on and so forth. I said, okay, let's get rid of everything and just make it simple IP. So we will see that too. So all of these words, actually most of these words which are in, in blue will be defined in the next few slides. Yeah. So, uh, when you say that OFDMA is used in market, where when you, uh, when you talk about VIMAX, uh, isn't that a better for the battery of the device? I mean, when you talk about mobile devices, you need to uh, factor in like power availability, like, OFDMA takes a lot of power. No, I mean, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'll hold on to the thought that OFDMA takes a lot of power. No, it doesn't take a lot of power. That is, that is not the problem. Uh, why did you think that OFDMA takes a lot of power? Uh, just for the fact that uh, OFDMA is uh, 
high. Okay, so that is coming up. Peak to average ratio is coming up later on in the slides. Okay, so hold on to that thought then. That peak to average doesn't mean that the power is high. It's just it's slightly different. All right, so we move on to that. Actually, this right here it will show up. So the way OFDMA works is we have explained to you in many different ways, but I have not shown you this diagram, which is important to understand how this is implemented inside. So at the base station, these bits are going to user one, these bits are going to user two, these bits are using, going to user k. Right? Each user's bit goes through a coding, FEC, forward error correction coding. All right. So that is where we add more bits so that if something happens, we can correct it. After that, we, we do the QAM modulation. So then we decide, you know, whether it is 64 QAM or 16 QAM or how it will go for this user, right? Every user has a different modulation. Then this is done serial to parallel. So all these things, all these symbols as we call them now, are serialized, sorry, parallelized. So first one goes here, second one goes there, third one goes there, fourth one goes there, then fifth one goes there, and so on and so forth. So they just, you know, they become parallel. Okay, I've shown here four in a parallel, but there might be more than four, okay? And so all these users. Now this one, now at this point, we might have, let's say, 1024. As, let's just assume that we are using 1024 subcarriers, right? So we don't just put these users on the 1024 one by one, we just randomize them too. So this one might go here, second stream might go there, and so on and so forth. So this is subcarrier mapper. So what that means is that these are your subcarriers, but the one that go on the air may not be in the same order. Okay, the order is randomized in some way. I mean, Actually, it is a fixed mapping, but basically the first carrier may go there, second carrier may go there, and third carrier, and so on and so forth, right? So that way, if some noise hits some carriers, it doesn't hit the same user. All right? The noise is distributed among many different users because now the users are all over on this side. On this side, so this is actually... M to M or L to L mapping, that means the number of channels coming in here, carriers coming in is exactly the same as number of carriers going out there. And so it's just different order. Yeah. Enter. It is just like interleaving. In some sense, yes. Interleaving is generally used for bits in the time domain. This is in the frequency domain interleaving. Okay, I mean, in some sense, in the time domain, you take the bits from this and this guy and then mix them together, that is interleaving, right? So this is frequency domain, and these are all frequencies, and these are all frequencies coming out. Clear? All right, then we do IFFT, L point IFFT, which basically means whatever, whatever uh, number of carriers you have, that number of uh, IFFT, inverse fast Fourier transform. As a result of that, whatever comes out here, you do parallel to serial. Now you serialize it. So now this looks like one bit stream or one waveform stream, whatever that is. All right. And you add the cyclic prefix and you send it off on the air. All right. So notice that everything starts as a serial and goes out as a serial, but in between we make all these things parallel and randomize them and so on and so forth. Now, when it comes back, the opposite is done, exactly opposite of this. So, first thing we do is we remove the cyclic prefix, do the serial to parallel, do the FFT, instead of IFFT, we do FFT, do the D mapping, we had mapped it here, do the D mapping, now the bits are actually in the order of the user, so we just have to worry about one user here now. On the receiving side, we don't have to worry about user 2, 3, 4, let's say this is user 1. So it just takes the bits that belong to it. Okay. And then does the frequency equalization. This was not there on your slides. Frequency domain equalizer, FEQ. 
FEQ is the frequency domain equalizer. So basically what it is, is now you are going to do the demodulation and you need to know what the channel was and so on and so forth. So for these carriers, whatever the amplitude and the phase was, so basically we, we do that equalization. This is basically what is called channel estimate. So for each carrier, we know what the channel did to it. Okay. It reduced the amplitude by this amount. It changed the phase by this amount and so on and so forth. All that is removed. So now you have good estimate of what you have received and then you do parallel to serial. So that is the opposite of this. Parallel to serial. Now you do the demodulation and you get the bits back. Okay. So, this is the reason I have to explain, and one reason that you have to understand is that in the last time when we had this research seminar, somebody asked us to, you know, if you if you have to change your frequencies every few microseconds, don't you have to change your radio? No, nothing in the radio is changed. The radio receives all 1024 on every user, on every phone, you receive all 1024 subcarriers, right? It's just that which one you have to you have to receive is in the map. So you, they are mapped here and they are demapped here. That map is transmitted in the frame, transmitted, you know, beforehand. So you know which are your carriers. So then you use it. If your carriers change, you just map will change automatically and there's no more extra work to be done in any way. Now what these are, these are all mathematics. This is all mathematics here. IFFT, FFT. This is all, you know, matrix multiplication and things like that. Okay. So whether you are doing matrix multiplication by 1024 non-zero numbers or you are doing matrix multiplication of 1024 with some zero numbers doesn't make much difference. Okay. So, yeah, go ahead. Um, the fact that you're receiving all of this other information that's not necessarily pertaining to you, does that have any bearing on uh, energy efficiency? No, that's what I'm saying. So this is exactly the point, is that energy is consumed in the radio part, right? Not in the, this is basically, the, the radio part is where the energy is consumed. When this thing goes into the radio, into the antenna, you transmit the energy, right? And when you receive, once it, once it goes inside, then it is basically some numbers which are being sent from here to there, okay? So that is one thing is that the multiply any matrix multiplication is same size in in the receiver and the transmitter. This is this is a thousand twenty four FFT IFFT and in the receiver it is thousand twenty four FFT. The only difference here is <coughs> actually th that is, that difference is even not there. Actually, I was thinking there is a difference here. So this is exactly the same. Only we after the FFT is done, we just take our own bits and leave everything else out. This is like Ethernet. In the Ethernet, you can hear everybody's frame. Okay, all the frames that are coming to the same wire, actually we don't use the wire anymore, but technically you can hear everybody's frame if connected to the same wire, but you just take your frame out and leave everybody else's out. Right? Yeah, question. Yeah, so the first block is for the offering and the second one is for the downing. So, hold on. So, the first one is the transmitter at the base station. The transmitter at the base station means transmitter is high, right? On the mountain. So, that would be the first set of diagram is for downlink. Yeah, okay. Now, hold on. No, no, it's not for uplink. Second one is the receiver at the, at the mobile. This is, is still, it's still downlink. Right? This is the downlink transmitter. This is the downlink receiver. Well, uh, it's coming up. Up is coming up in a minute. Because remember, I said OFDMA only in the downlink. First, this has to be clear as to what these modules are and what happens inside. Because if you don't have concept of this, then, you know, then different kinds of questions come up. You know, it, like they came up in the presentation last week in, in another place anyway. 
So it's clear that everything is transmitted, all the carriers are transmitted and all the carriers are received. The carriers are randomized for different users are mixed in. And, um, and then um, basically um, each user may have their own modulation. Somebody may use 16 qualms, somebody may use 64 qualm and so on and so forth. And then um, basically there is a lot of serial repair. I haven't really shown here the radio part. So this is all the digital part. Right. After this, it goes into the radio where there is an amplifier and, um, you know, this is analog part. Right. I haven't shown you that. That's the, where the cost is. That's where the energy is. Right. 